In this video, I'll show you the Object Styles Manager and how I work with object styles in Adobe Captivate. I've seen a lot of people working with their e-learning development and spending a great deal of time designing all the various objects that go into an e-learning course. And, you know, they might be, for example, designing a particular style of button. They use that button on slide one, and then they move on to slide two, and then they essentially go through the same process to recreate that button a second time. What I want to let you know is that there is an easier way. If you have, and your company, of course, are, are interested in rapid e-learning development, this is definitely something you're going to want to look at if you're not already familiar with it. And that's the Object Styles Manager. Let me uh, show you how you access that. You do that from the Edit drop-down menu. And down near the bottom where Preferences is, you'll see Object Style Manager. And you can access it by clicking on that item or alternatively press Shift F7. And that's going to bring you into this window here. Now I think one of the reasons that people maybe shy away from the Object Style Manager is that it's kind of a confusing interface. It's not really well labeled and, you know, it's not really clear what all these things do. Let me try my best to explain it to you. So in this uh, window here, what you're seeing, these are all the various objects that can exist or do exist within this particular theme or template. If you scroll down and you open up all of these items, you can see that there are objects uh, or listings for the objects like buttons, smart shapes, even the runtime dialog can be customized to a certain degree. And all of these items are available for you to select. Now what you're seeing in the next column is the actual object style. These are the objects, these are the object styles. So for example, if you have a text caption, it's going to have the default caption style. Now there are a few other caption styles that you could choose and override this existing uh, settings. But one of the things that you can do is actually create your own object styles as well. You could clone one of the existing ones, make some changes, give it a new name, make some changes and, and save it. But I work a little bit differently. And this is a great tool. You've got your preview here. You can do all this stuff. But I work differently. What I do is I still work on my stage. So for example, when I'm designing an interface for e-learning, one of the things that I might need is, for example, a button. We'll start off with that. So I go into my Interactions drop-down icon, and I select Button here. Now this particular theme is one that I designed before. So these are all decisions that I've previously made. And I've saved those in default text button style. But let's make a new style. And the first thing you do, don't need to do anything here yet. Let's go here and make some different choices. So I've got transparent button. I've got caption, doesn't matter in this case here. Let's make a green style button. And we'll just choose here. In fact, I won't have any stroke on this at all. I will choose a corner radius for this one. The other ones I'm using are square, let's say 25%. That's going to give it a nice rounded appearance. Let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see this button a little more close up here. And in this case, uh, Arial is fine, but I'm going to want these buttons to be in italic. And uh, I'd like to actually bump the font up just a tad bit. 14. And uh, the color is fine. But let's take a look at the state view. I'm going to probably want to make some changes there. Um, if we take a look at the button again, here the uh, rollover state, and this is just inherited from the default style, goes back to a gray color. So let's, let's override that. Let's make that something a little bit different. I'll choose a gradient fill. And in this case here, I'm going to choose that color, that green color. And then I'll choose a darker green color there. So I'm going to flip these around. And I'm just going to make some changes here. Make that white. 
the text will be white and the down state let's make the down state the dark green and we'll also have white as well there so what we have now is a button that starts off in its normal state as a lighter green when you roll over you get a slight shadow and when you click it down it becomes darker and that's pretty much what I had in mind. So what I can do now, now that I've got this button created, next to style name, of course, you have this menu where you can choose one of your default styles or select one of the ones you've previously created. Uh, there's nothing there for you to save. Well, where save is located is actually in this little icon off to the right of style name. And just because of the nature of uh, the way my desktop is set up this is I'm gonna have to move this so let's create a new style and let me move this over so you can see what's here save new object style you can call this whatever you want we can call this Paul's green button perfect so that's all well and good, but you might be thinking, okay, so what? <laughs> and that's a legitimate uh, thing that you might want to, to complain about, but let's just give you a real life example of why this can save you a great deal of time. I'm just duplicating some default buttons here on the screen. And we'll just do some, maybe some alignment work here. Let's just make sure that they're all spaced properly and aligned with one another so i have all my buttons there and i want to apply that same style of button all i need to do is select it from this style name drop down there it is at the bottom paul's green button give it a second to update them all and now i have four of those all exact same buttons including, of course, the rollover effects and the down states. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.